All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Maloney. I work at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, located on 129th Street, uh, just off of Malcolm X Boulevard in New York City. I wanna thank you for joining us uh, tonight. Um, for those of you who are new to the museum, uh, we present uh, over 100 public programs a year, uh, virtually in the past year, but uh, we will be reopening soon and we hope you will join us. Um, on behalf of our executive director, Tracy Heider Suffern, as well as our artistic team of Christian McBride and John Batiste, we welcome you to another virtual session here. Uh, this is part three of a series we're doing exploring the intersections of jazz music and various styles of dance. Um, and tonight we'll be looking at uh, dance music, sometimes known as, as house music or, um, well, in New York anyways, it's known as house music underground. Uh, so we're going to jump right into it. We have two guests tonight, uh, DJ Ali Coleman, who can be heard virtually all over the place and, uh, and also throughout New York City and the world as a, as a professional DJ, has a tremendous background um, playing, playing shows and, and getting people moving and grooving all over the planet. So Ali Coleman, thank you. Welcome. Yes, yes. Happy Tuesday. Thank yeah, you so much. Yep, yep, of course. And, um, and our other guest, Miss Sheila Ford, who um, has done a little bit of everything with her voice and, and everything in between. And um, she is certainly known as a jazz vocalist and has, can be heard across a lot of different dance music tracks over the years. And we're really excited to dig into um, a little bit of her background as well. So Sheila, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, Ryan, Ali. Mm -hmm. Thanks yeah, for having me. Today. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. So, you know, at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, obviously, majority of what we do is we look at jazz. But um, tonight, you know, infrequently in jazz, people tend to, especially jazz people, tend to put boxes around what is and what is isn't. And I'm sure that happens in every genre. Um, but tonight, I'm really excited to hear from the two of you, given that you, um, you know, work in the dance music world, um, but also have a passion and interest and a background in jazz, just how these two seemingly, at least on the surface, seemingly disparate musical genres, how they intersect, because I know they do. Um, so I'm really excited uh, about kind of getting into some of that. Um, but I always like to start with just getting to know uh, our guests a little bit. And, and Sheila, maybe you could just share with us a little bit about your early experiences with music and, mm -hmm. you know, how you got into it, what you grew up around and, and how you kind of got started. Okay. Well, um, I was actually born into a family full of musicians. So it came naturally. It, it just, it just happened. I mean, I knew from early, like single digit years mm. that I wanted to be in, you know, the music industry. So um, my dad played piano in Oregon and he sang, my mom played piano. She sang, my oldest brother played trumpet and he sang and directed the choir and all that okay. kind of stuff, bands. My, was, this in, was this in Baltimore? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then my other brother played saxophone and he sang, and he's also, he was also a DJ. So, <laughs> and I grew up l loving jazz because my parents were so much into jazz. I mean, you could hear Count Basie and Duke Ellington and Elvis Gerald Seraphon, you know, the list goes on and on and on. So I was always surrounded by jazz, sure. you know. And then later on, my brother um, would, like I said, he was a DJ. He actually started the jazz program at uh, WEA in Baltimore, the, you know, the jazz program there. Okay. And he also did a program on um, uh, WBJC in Baltimore that was jazz. And I used to go and perform on the show and everything. But anyway, going back, I I can remember when I was very little and I'm maybe four or five years old and 
every time they played Ella Fitzgerald, I was so fascinated. Mm. I mean, it was, I was so drawn to her. Sure. And just like, it, it was, I can't even explain it. Um, and I would try to mimic her. I loved when she would scat and I would try to mimic it. And I'm a, a little, little girl. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> fascinated by her and that never left me. Mm. But also, um, I started playing the piano when I was four and clarinet when I was seven. And then I added on guitar and bassoon and oboe wow. and acoustic bass okay. and um, flute. I've been through a lot of instruments. <laughs> one, wo one woman band. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. And then, you know, I sang along with that too. But um, and also played for in church. I played for the choirs and Sunday school and things like that. So mm -hmm. I was in the marching bands in school. And, uh, you know, I played for like the choirs in school. And I was in the bands. Like I said, choirs are bad. So, it's been going on for a long time. <laughs> did you ever consider, did, was there ever a, a, a moment where you thought that music wouldn't be your entire future? Nope. <laughs> I mean, I knew, I knew that I wanted to be music to be a part of my life when I was around seven years old and yeah. that never changed. Yeah. It never changed. I mean, I knew it was going to be some challenges sure. later on, but it was always there. Yeah. Always there. So yeah. yeah. Couldn't. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What about you, Ollie? Like when you were growing up, what, what was your fan? What was your exposure to music at a young age? And, and what were you guys listening to ar around the house? I, I think that uh, most people in a certain age group would agree if you grew up in certain neighborhood on Saturday mornings, you woke up and the family cleaned the house. And at my house, anyway, it was we put a, my dad and mom would put a stack of records on the component set. And they had Grover Washington Jr. in them, and Santana, and some, like literally everything James Brown, Fela. So I grew up at my house listening to all types of music and um, my grandfather was a general bishop of all free world baptist churches so i also went to church and my grandma and my mom and my aunties and that my uncle was the piano player and the bass player so much like Sheila, you know i grew up like in a family of musicians um some of my my great uncles were um, this, they formed this group in the 1950s called the Coleman Brothers, which was a gospel group. And they lasted, I don't know, about 30 years of being one of the top gospel groups um, in the country. And mm. um, then later on in the disco era, one of my aunties um, helped form the band called Pure Energy, which was like a disco slash underground dance band. And from the, from very early age myself, like, I remember standing in front of the choir at the age of four singing. Like up until I discovered turntables, I was gonna be a singer. Mm. Like, Ooh. like I, I, I could sing in five octaves, even soprano as a little boy. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I used to say I could sing like a bird. And mm. um, I, at one time I was, I tried out for the Newark Boys Course, which was a very famous boys course mm -hmm. over in Newark. Um, unfortunately, I moved right when i was you know auditioning um i was a shoe in and then i moved so i i really couldn't partake in it um but yeah music was huge in my life mm. like i always knew that i was going to be doing something in music for sure yeah that's good and, that's yeah, good one of the things that that i heard you say and that i i hear a lot of um people who grow up in really musical families especially when they're talking about growing up around with, with black music being the, the primary musical influence, this idea of genres, you know, you just said it, you had Santana, you had James Brown, you had Duke Ellington, and they were all on the hi-fi and, and they just played. So the idea of like this being one thing and this being another thing, mm -hmm. it wasn't, it, th that wasn't part of it, right? 
music. Not at all. That's no. right. Yeah, we grew up listening to all kinds of music. Everything. Yep. Yeah. I had the same experience. Yep. Yeah. And I'll and you to 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 further that point, um, there was a time in in our country here, right, where everyone did that on Saturday, cleaned up the house, and then at eleven o'clock, everything stopped, and everyone across the country, no matter where you were at. At 11 o'clock your time, you were watching Soul Train, mm. you know, yep. or and then <laughs> after Soul Train, because everybody wanted to see the new dances and hear the new songs. Mm. And then after Soul Train, you were watching American Bandstand. Mm. Yep. So we were we were all connected through That's the music. True. Sure. As well. Sure. So I'm curious uh, when it came to like dance music in particular, uh, and like, at what point in your musical evolution did you start to see that there was this, this, this style? I don't. I hesitate to even say genre, but this this world in which music was being created specifically for dancers. You mentioned Soul Train, which of course is that. But like, when did you see yourself start to be start to gravitate towards, uh, you know, music creating music for dancers? Is that for me or Sheila? Either one. Sheila, you want to? Well, for me, I never imagined um, singing and writing and performing dance music, house music. That that was never the plan. <laughs> that happened by accident, actually. Mm. Um, because Sounds like there's a story there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I jazz has always been my forte. Hmm. And so I was, that's what I was doing. And um, even though I sing other genres as well, you know, the R&B, the phone pop, everything, that's all in there. But jazz is my strength, you know. So actually how I got into house music, I mean, I always enjoyed listening to it and dancing to it prior to the time that I started with it. But I was actually doing a a musical at the time. And one of the guys that I worked with, his name was Joe Wormley. You know, he sang house. He he was a beautiful spirit, but he he came to me one day and said, you know, I'm I'm working with this producer and I think you would be really good to work with him. Hmm. I want you all to meet because you you should work with him. And I was like okay, um, I'll meet him. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that it was going to be house music or anything. I, I didn't know. So anyway, sure. he came to our show and saw it. And then afterwards we talked and he said, I, um, I would like for you to work with me and sing some house music. And I looked at him like, you want me to do what? <laughs> you know, I wasn't, you know, a lot of people are jazz purists. Sure. And I was leaning toward that side, even though I liked everything. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. At that time. So when he said that, I was like, you want you want me to do what? Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. Well, okay, I'll try it, yeah. you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, we started working together and... Even then, when I was doing it, I didn't realize what was happening. Mm -hmm. but, you know what I mean? And I started writing it and recording it, and we would go perform. And, and I didn't even realize how big it was as far as people knowing who I am in house huh. music. Yeah. Yes. I did not know because at that time, you know, you didn't have social media and sure. all those things. So, Oh, I'm sorry. The person I'm talking about is Charles Dawkins. He's a extraordinary producer in okay. house music. And so that, that happened in the early nineties. And, um, so we started working together, like I said, but I had no idea how much people knew who I was from all over the world hmm. until um, we have this big conference every year. Well, not the past couple of years, obviously, sure. but in Miami called the Winter Music Conference. And this is where people come from all over the world who are lovers of the DJs, the producers, the artists, agents, everybody from mm -hmm. 
from labels um, to Miami for this conference. Yep. And not until the first time I went to that conference and they were introduced me, hey, this is Sheila Ford, this is Sheila Ford. And people were looking at me like, what? Oh my God, you're Sheila Ford. Oh, mm. oh, it's so nice to meet you. I have all of your music mm. and things like that. And I'm looking at them like, really? <laughs> what? And I mean, this happened constantly. Sure. You know, every time they say my name, they knew my they knew my mu music and name, but they really didn't couldn't put a face to it because sure. at the time, the covers a lot of right. times they didn't have your face on it, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> which was not wow. fun. But they finally they could finally put a face to the name, sure. and it was just fascinating to me that all of these people, you know, from Switzerland and the UK yeah. and France and. Uh, Australia and all Japan. over the place, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. knew who I was. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, I continued on from there and haven't stopped. So, yeah. but yeah, thank but, goodness for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the crazy part about that is not crazy, but you know, sometimes people wanted to put you in a category. Sure. Right. You know, so. The whole time I've been doing house music, I never stopped doing jazz mm -hmm. or anything else. But people say, oh, you sing house music, so you, you don't sing jazz anymore. Sure. You know, that kind of thing. And sure. I'm like, don't yeah. you hear my music? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't you hear it? The jazz is there. Right. It's going to be there. Right. But um, they, you know, some people just didn't, couldn't put tie that together. Of course. And then there were some people, the people who knew me for singing jazz didn't know about the house music side of me, mm -hmm. not until MySpace. <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, infamous MySpace. <laughs> the infamous MySpace. So I started putting up these songs and, you know, all this material and people are like, is this the same Sheila Ford? <laughs> right, right. Did I sing a Sheila Ford? Yeah. And they were like, when did you do all of this? I yeah. said, I've been doing it for years. You just didn't know. Sure. Well, I yeah. thought you were a jazz singer. I am. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I do this too. Of you course. know. <laughs> yeah. And so it was just it was just funny to me to see their reactions to that. Sure. You know? Sure. So yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's been it's been very interesting. Uh, journey <laughs> yeah yeah well and and then you mix in the music industry on top of that and their their desire to market Exploit. artists in certain ways and mm -hmm. do all that you know it 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 it, it, it dawned on me that um, a lot of our audience at the jazz museum probably don't really have a sense of what we're talking about when we're talking about house music you know mm -hmm. and dance music and underground uh, ali could you just like give us a a, a brief kind of um, background on, on the on the the style that we're kind of referencing and, and a little bit of its history and then maybe maybe playing play us a short something just to get it in our ears. Uh, sure. Um, you know, I started going out in 1979. I got I got the buzz around 77. So I guess that's when disco was going down, right? And and then they had the whole big disco sucks thing. And um, instead of disco really sucking and it just fading out, um, it went back to the underground clubs, like the Paradise Garage and the Loft and some of the other clubs in New Jersey and in Baltimore and stuff like that. We just started calling it club music. And we, you know, and then a few years later, Chicago dubbed, they, they did a few, um, things to it like they put a couple of different beats to it and they called it house music so there was a song that said i remember house before it was house so i remember house before it was house mm -hmm. um and what what i always said was again the that the music that we listened to we listened to the police we listened to stevie wonder we listened to so many artists who did not make when they made their music they did not say it was house music they just made music. They made good music, and we listened to that in the club. So from my perspective, um, 
dance music, I, I, I don't really get trapped in like Sheila. I don't get, I've never been one to be trapped uh, or allow people to trap me into saying I'm a house head. Sure. I, I have an organization called the House Coalition, and, and people know when I play music, I do play some house music, and I play some jazz, and I play, but I, I never like to be pigeonholed as I'm just a house DJ. Sure. Um, because to me, house music and, and the music that the culture, the underground culture, it, it was a mixture of everything, and that's what made it underground. It, it wasn't just one type of thing. When you went there, it was all, you saw people of all cultures at the loft, at the garage. You, you saw, you heard music of all genres, music that you would never think you even would hear mm -hmm. at those clubs. Like the first record that I connected to jazz um, and dance music was probably in most people's opinion, the um the number one dance record of all time, which is this record called Love is the Message. Mm -hmm. And if you ask anyone who's going out dancing and clubbing in their life, what is one of the top dance records they ever heard in a club? A lot of them would say this record. Mm. And it's filled with jazz elements, right, Sheila? Like That's right. filled. It's like it's basically a jazz band doing danceable yeah. music. And I think Mel Sharon said it best. Someone asked him about, you know, disco and the underground. And he said it was just basically danceable R&B, mm -hmm. danceable gospel. And he didn't really know that in church, we dance, shouting is dancing. Mm -hmm. When people get up and they're shouting and they're, you know, I, I don't know if everyone understands what shouting is, but if you went to a, a Baptist church, you know what shouting is. When the Holy Ghost gets you, right? <laughs> you get up and you dancing around the church, that's dancing. Because mm -hmm. every time I saw shouting at my church, the musicians would play the music too. Mm -hmm. So it was all connected, you know? Um, so I, I never really thought of it as something that was separate from everything else. Sure. It's like all connected. Sure. So my, my short answer is house music is jazz music. Sure. House sure. music is gospel music. House music is R&B. House music, house music literally is all of that. It's yep. Latin. It's literally every music. Bonk. Yeah, any <laughs> music that you can name, any so-called genre that you can name, there is, it's, there's an element of that inside of house sure. music. Sure, yeah. Even for classical. Sure. Yep, even classical, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and it speaks to, I mean, it's interesting, you know, I, I, I have frequently have this same conversation um, around jazz in particular. And, you know, one of the things that we kind of contextualize it at the museum is, you know, there's this river of, of, of Black American music, right, that kind of starts with how, wherever you want to start it, but early, you know, early, uh, you know, um, spirituals and, and uh, music that, that evolves in America with African traditions and, and that river starts and then, you know, there's all these little tributaries that kind of mm -hmm. go off of it and, and, and the, it's a constant, um, constantly evolving musical experience that maintains a, this certain core that revolves a lot around you know the social aspects of music the the danceable aspects of the music and also the like the forward thinking you look at all the major musical innovations in the past 100 years 120 years in america it they're coming by and large from the african-american community so um no there's no uh it's not unexpected that when we look at house music and that underground scene that a lot of that is being driven um, by by. Tell me a little bit more about that community that that is evolving in the early '80s and and kind of creating that that scene. Um, well, again, that community was everyone. Mm. Um, it it, I mean, the house and dance underground dance community actually started with um, 
um, the gay audience, the gay crowd, right? So they would they because it was it was illegal to be gay. It was like illegal. I don't even like to use that word. That's why it was so hard for me to say gay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it started with 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 like the cabaret law, where two men couldn't dance with each other, or two women couldn't dance with each other, or a Caucasian man and uh, uh, African woman couldn't dance with each other. So it was this oppression. It came from this oppression of trying to make people not be who they are sure. and be able to express themselves. So that's the the beginnings of, of what the underground culture was. It was like parties like The Loft, David Mancuso, and... Um, the gallery, Nikki Siano, and a number of other places in the Paradise Garage, and they were predominantly, predominantly gay. And what happened was, there's this whole new thing. It's not new anymore, but that it started like in the '80s, where mixed clubs started happening, mm-hmm. where it was everybody together because, and those clubs were basically gay clubs that we forced ourselves on <laughs> saying mm-hmm. that's where all the fun is. <laughs> so we're <laughs> going to go to those clubs. <laughs> so we better work something out where we all can get along with each other. And, and it didn't take, it didn't take anything because if you're starting with love in your heart, that's what you're going to end with. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's literally what the underground culture is that I've been around. It's mm-hmm. been love. I, I, I can tell you, I, I like, I think maybe I've seen, ruckus out of the 30 to 40 years that i've been going out i, I may have seen ruckus once yeah and mm-hmm. it and it was at a club that was not our club mm-hmm. <laughs> you know right. like when people go right when people go to our parties like the paradox right yes it's always love it's filled mm-hmm. with love when you leave you just feel energized and you mm-hmm. feel like you had you just released and connected to the ancient vibrations mm-hmm. that's true Mm. Nobody's coming there to fight or start anything. I mean, it's none of that. Like you said, it's rare that that happens. I mean, yeah. I can count on one hand how many times yeah. I've experienced anything. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. And then it was minor. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and again, just it echoes, it echoes a lot of what was happening in Harlem in the 20s and the 30s when we start to see the first integrated clubs, you know opening and we see black and white audiences hanging out together, you know, listening to dance music, dancing together. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of for those those jazz heads out there, there I'm hearing a lot of parallels as far as how this community and culture kind of evolves. It's about bringing people together. Um, Sheila, I'm curious, you know, what does performing live in a house music setting look like are you with a band are you with a dj or 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 what is that what is that experience like well typically it's with a a dj uh you're singing performing to tracks Mm -hmm. you know and honestly i had to get used to that Mm. from the beginning because i was so used to performing with bands you know that was my thing and for the first, when I had to start doing it, it was just so strange to me to, to do it that way because you have the track going along with the band, you can improvise, sure. stretch it out, you Add know, chorus, sure. if you want, you know, vamp for however long you want to. Right. <laughs> but, you know, singing to a track, everything has to be in line with the track. And mm-hmm. sometimes somebody may start a, start the track and, they may start it in the wrong place and you didn't hear where you're supposed to come in and then yeah. they have to kind of bag it up or sure. mix it in or something like that so it won't look like you did something wrong. Sure, sure. So, yeah, that part, that that's that was very tricky. Yeah. But, you know, eventually I got used to doing it that way. Sure. Although, I mean, I do wish that, you know, that live element could be there more, but budget-wise typically it's too much to have a whole band sure you know Mm -hmm. but i mean i've had situations where i have been able to do that yeah sure and i love it it's beautiful when you can do it but unfortunately it doesn't happen you know all the time because like i said the budget it's just it doesn't allow for it sure sure Mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah Yeah, i could i could attest to that um 
you know, I've seen, I don't know, thousands of, of performances and, you know, have had performances myself in, in clubs and, and always when you, when there's a band with them performing, it's a little bit more special. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. when George Benson performed at the shelter, mm. you know, like, you know, it's just like, it's just a little bit more, um, cause it's that live aspect of sure. live music, you know? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, it, it brings, brings us to our next talking point, which is improvisation. I mean, if, if you're, if you're, you know, performing along with the track, there's only, there's limited uh, improvising that you can do and improvisation, of course, being one of the really core elements of, of, of jazz music. Um, how have you found, Sheila, improvisation, do you approach improvisation in a similar way, whether you're singing jazz or singing house, are you still able to embrace yes. improvisation? And yes. how, how do you go about that? I scat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the scat and- You mean like this? Do you scat? You scat. Yes, you do. <laughs> you scat. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that. Um, like I said, I approached it from a jazz um, aspect, so I wanted to scat in house. Mm -hmm. You know, there at the time there weren't many people doing it. No, too. So it just it just seemed like the right thing to do, and okay. it was natural for me. I mean, you get to those uh, the vamps or whatever, and you want to improvise and instead of saying, oh yeah, blah, 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 you know, mm -hmm. I did that too. But mm -hmm. then that scat came in at some point sure. and I just went with it. And yeah. then people started knowing me for the one who scats in house music, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that goes back to that little girl who was mimicking Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald, that's right. You know, and, yeah. and going forward, I mean, people I was always into her I mean that's if I had to pick one that that it was her but I also had Betty Carter you know sure. Desi, John Hendricks Lam Lambert Hendricks and Ross mm -hmm. Dizzy Gillespie um and also the Latin jazz artist uh, Tanya Maria okay and oh yeah I had a uh, George Benson of course and Al Jarreau yes. and yes. um Bobby McFerrin I mean the list goes on and on as far as that goes but it's just natural. I'm, I'm going to scat before, sure. <laughs> and then loving percussion instruments, and I lean on the bass and the percussion a lot. So I'll mimic that sound. Okay. Too. So, it just, it just worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and as a DJ who plays your music, um, for thousands of people at sometimes, um, I see the effect that your music has firsthand from the DJ booth. Like literally people screaming on the floor, like 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 screaming uncontrollably because of of connecting to the vibe that you're putting out. It's like oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting loose pimples just thinking about it. <laughs> oh <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, like in got the song got a hold on me that you just played when it starts the climax and it gets to that part and people just go nuts on that part. And it just you see a whole sea of people just getting excited about that. Oh, that is such a good feeling. Well, actually what I wanna do is since you just described that part, I wanna let them hear that okay. part of the song. Okay. 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 Okay.
Oh my God. Everybody be losing their mind right now. <laughs> the whole club be like, oh my, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. Woo! <laughs> oh lord that i gotta tell you um Shilla, that is my favorite record of the entire 2000s wow and wow. and if it was only 2002 or 2004 yeah you might not be saying that but we're like two decades <laughs> in. wow we're like, we're like two decades in and i get records every week from all over the world Wow. And that song is my favorite song of the entire 2000s. Thank hands you. Down. Thank you. <laughs> hands down. I'm going to sing you some awesome. I'm going to sing you some video with people dancing to that song. Oh, please do. I want to see it. You oh, know, sure. and okay, I, I, no, I was just you know, it's so fascinating Sheila hearing hearing your your music and and I'm imagining like you one night in like a jazz club, you know, a, a you know a stuffy jazz club where people are you know scared to even clap, you know. Yes. yes. Because we all know that a lot of jazz clubs are that way, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not yep. saying anything that isn't that isn't it's true. true. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next night, Ali playing your track for a thousand people that are losing their mind, you know, mm-hmm. like how how have we got to a point? where there's such a divide in the way that people experience music that is not, not hugely different from each other, you know, mm-hmm. in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, like, how, why do you suppose that our audiences are, are so hesitant to experience that level of joy in a jazz setting? Because I know I frequently feel that joy in a mm-hmm. jazz setting. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I don't feel like I can express that joy with my body or mm-hmm. with, with my voice. So why mm-hmm. do you think that is? Well, I mean, it it might be because they're not familiar with it. Mm-hmm. You know, just like I told you, like I was talking about before, how people stick to one genre. Sure. And that's what they know and that's all they want to know. So it, it may be because they're just not familiar enough with the other genre, mm-hmm. either way, because you know you have jazz um, folks who say, "Oh, I only listen to jazz." Mm-hmm. You have house music uh, people, as known as house heads, sure. that's uh, who say they only listen to house music. So, what happens? It's great that you love that genre, but you miss out on a whole lot of other genres that you would enjoy if you just gave it a chance yes you know what i mean so what i love about doing jazz and house music and then everything else i do is i have been able to bring other people into house music who under normal circumstances wouldn't even be interested in it or know about it mm-hmm. because of the jazz element. Sure. And so they hear this and it's like, oh, wow, this mm-hmm. is, I could hear the jazz in it. Sure. You know, so they appreciate There have been times when I've done a jazz show and I've done that song. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. got a hold of them. Like, it was different from everything else, you sure. know, but they loved it. Yeah. They yeah. loved it. And then also, um, because, you know, the people who know me for house music, they have, they started coming to my jazz shows because mm. they were curious. And then when they came and they heard what I did there and they said, oh, now I get it. Now I get where you, you're coming from, mm. you know? 
So then they started listening to jazz. They started loving jazz. And next thing I know, every time I did a jazz show, they would show up. Yeah. You know? (laughs) And so it it just, that's why, that's one reason why I like doing it, Mm -hmm. you know, so much because it brings more people together. Sure. You know, turns them on to things that they may not have, they may have missed or, you know, not for any fault of their own, but just. Right. You know, it just yeah. happened that way. But yeah, yeah so <laughs> that's, that's how yeah. I do it. Yeah. Uh, Ali, I want to circle back to the, the idea of improvisation. You know, as a DJ, you're up there. You have hundreds, thousands of songs in your catalog that you could draw from. What are you thinking about? How? What is your goal as a DJ when you're there and there's people out there and they're waiting to hear something from you. What? It, how do you approach that? And then how does improvisation play a role in, in you creating a, an experience for, for dancers? Well, my goal, my, my, my goal is to have everyone leave that place and want to hear me again, first mm-hmm. and foremost. Um, and again, when, when you have such an open mind to music, I think improvisa- improvisation is an automatic thing because I'm not reaching for the same, like I'm not gonna just play Afro house all night. I'm not just gonna play Chicago house all night. I'm not just gonna play this and that and this and that. Like literally everyone who, who comes to my shows knows that they can hear Bolero, you know? Like I, I was one time playing Bolero and then I was playing it, you know, 15 minute version. Mm-hmm. And I, I had a, another record queued up, which was a Francois K dance record. Mm-hmm. And the person in the DJ booth looked at me and was like, how are you gonna mix? And before he can say that, the, I was mixing the two records together. And he was like, oh, and everybody was losing their minds. Mm-hmm. So I, I just know that I'm gonna play music that touches your soul and I, I try to find music from everywhere like from like all parts of the world some of it slow some of it fast like just to tell a story like if you're playing it from like people say oh now the sets are one hour or two hours you know we used to play for nine hours so you can mm-hmm. play anything you want you mm-hmm. can start slow and go to the middle and end fast and go back slow mm-hmm. and people say oh you can't do that in an hour and i say yeah you can tell us you can tell a story with three hmm. records hmm. like it's been thousands of times that we we do it like sure. you put one record on that's slow and then another record so so it's always that way in my brain and and i always come at it from a as a dancer myself and not just a two-step dancer. Like, I'm the dancer that's in the club. Everyone's like, oh, my God. Let's go get some <laughs> of that energy. <laughs> you know, like... Bending on like, your head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and all the... Listen, the DJs in New York, they they smile when they see me at their parties. <laughs> they know that party going to be a little bit more energetic with me on the floor screaming yeah. and howling, especially if you pull it out. So I always come at it from that perspective. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just don't play music... Like, oh, I'm just going to play this music because everyone else is playing it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play music that I would dance to because sure. I know that if I, if it moves me, it pretty much is going to move other people because <laughs> sure. I'm, a, I'm a mover, you know. Yeah. So, so I always yeah. come at it from that perspective. Yeah. And, and, it, you know, Sheila, I'm sure you picked up on this, but hearing you, Ali, talk about, you know, the journey that you're trying to get people to go on, you know. Yes. Yeah. I mean, jazz musicians, as they're putting set lists together, you know, or an album together, it's the same exact thing, you know, like you can't be doing the same tempo tunes back to back. You want to change up the rhythmic feel. You want to, you know, so again, you're, you're trying to tell a story. You're trying to bring people on an experience. Um, Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always, and Ali, you and I've had a lot of conversations around this, but I'm always fascinated and so in surprise, I probably shouldn't be about the about the parallels, you know, just between how people appro- how musicians approach um, playing jazz music and how how people approach, you know, DJing and, and creating experiences for dancers in, in that in that setting. 
Um, can, I, can I say something? Of to course. That? Yeah. That because um, I've had that in a few interviews about how it how surprised people are to see the connection to all it is, and and I just really believe that no matter what we call it, there's really two types of music, like good music and not good music, right? And That's what Duke Ellington said. Yep. Yeah, and, and a lot of them, Quincy Jones, he actually said good music and, and bad music. I was like, I don't want to call people's music mm-hmm. bad, but good music and not good music. And it's it's like we're, we're not doing, I mean, it, it may like make it seem smaller, but it's really not. Like what we're doing is we're connecting to the same vibration that our furthest sure. back ancestors did. Sure. And they didn't have instruments so like we do or DJ equipment. But they still gathered with each other. Right. They may have hit on trees, had drums, whatever the musician, the instrument was. Their mm-hmm. their own bodies, right? Mm-hmm. So so we're just really as humans, we're seeking to connect to that vibration that raises us higher, mm-hmm. and that is across the board, no matter what genre we call it, no matter no matter what instrument, like if it's a sitar in that country and a guitar in this country, it's just a stringed instrument. Sure. You know, so we're, we're all just trying to connect to that. Mm-hmm. So that's what I feel makes it all together. Right. True. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so for, and, and we've touched on this, but I, I'm wondering if you guys could zero in on this a little bit more. For someone who's never heard house music, but listens to a lot of jazz music, what, what would you say to them? Or, or what are some, maybe some artists, obviously Sheila, your music, but what would you, what, what, what would you say to somebody who's maybe just getting interested in exploring this vast world of, of, of house music? Sheila, you wanna you wanna mm-hmm. kick it off? You mean as far as people to listen to? Well, either people to yeah. listen to or like because you know how how particular jazz people are. Yeah. Like, what is it about house music that you you want them to know? Like, what what do you feel would resonate with with them? Well, I mean, just give it a chance. Um, they will find something that they will enjoy. I mean, there are artists who are known for jazz who have also done house music. So maybe they could start there, you know, with artists they're familiar with, like Roy Ayers, George, George Benson, and, oh, and so many of them. Um, Stevie who have, Wonder. Huh? Stevie Wonder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's so many artists who have done house music or will still do <laughs> that they don't realize, you know, so maybe comprise a list of artists for them to start with and then they can branch off from there and, you know, it's something that will grow on them because I give you an example. My, <laughs> one of my brothers. Um, he, the one I told you started the jazz programs and the DJ, he did, he did not like house music. <laughs> and I would do stuff. He was like, oh, that's nice. That's nice. You know, but he wasn't really into it. And then all of a sudden when he heard songs like Got a Hold On Me and, and, and um, Do Our Song and things like that, that were really heavy heavily jazz influenced he started liking it (laughs) (laughs) and next thing i know i'm finding out that he's played it and you know he's knowing what's going on with it i was like where did that come from and i think because those elements were there that he could appreciate sure Mm -hmm. yep and you know if it if something like that can happen with him (laughs) i mean because he's a jazz aficionado sure and he's emceed a lot of jazz shows and, you know, all over the place. So if that can happen with him, it can happen with anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think so. I honestly think so. Yeah. So, 
Well, uh, what I hear, you know, what I hear in your music, I mean, there's a, there's a, a musicality and there's a, a, a melodicism and, and harmonic approach and rhythmic approach. I mean, the elements that make great music great, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are all represented in, in your music. And I think sometimes jazz people will say, well, if it, jazz is the, you know, has all of these complex elements in them that make it great, you know, and if other music doesn't have that, it's not great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I'm learning mm -hmm. is that there, you know, all, all genres have right. the great mm -hmm. element, you know, there's True. parts of it, of every genre and art, certain artists that represent all of those things at the highest possible level. You know, mm -hmm. there's the Charlie Parker and the Duke Ellington mm -hmm. of house music yep. and of, of, of everything in between, including, you know, hip hop and country Western music and everything. Right. There's mm -hmm. those people that represent and, and and hold all of those musical elements um, in a way that makes us feel good. Right. And I hear right. that, you know, Sheila, in, in your music. And um, I think it it. as long as we're not too quick to dismiss, you know, an entire body of music, I think exactly. we can find the, those things. Ali, who are some artists you would recommend? Who are some DJs or some producers that, that are folks are interested? Obviously you have, you have, um, you have SoundCloud stuff and you have stuff online, Mix playlists cloud. and things sure, that Mixcloud, sure. sure, that people mm -hmm. could, could track down. Um, but who are some, who are some of the seminal uh, DJs and producers who you feel have 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 really uh, embraced jazz in a, in a certain kind of way. Well, again, jazz is like those elements of horns and and guitars and um, I I one of my favorite producers of all time is just Louis Vega because mm -hmm. he works he works when Sheila was talking about the music you know the musicians being on stage at the club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He brings musicians to the club. Yes, mm -hmm. he um, does. He brings musicians to the studio. Mm. Like there is hardly any yep. MIDI. <laughs> there are hardly any MIDI instruments <laughs> in his records. Okay, mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. records are are mostly musicians playing those those songs. So okay. Louis is definitely always at the top for doing that. Um, also, I wouldn't say he's he's um, like in the jazz realm, so to speak, but again Ooh, jazz is gospel jazz. right isn't jazz gospel right yeah, there's sure. no there's no jazz without gospel there's none of this stuff that we're talking about that without those spiritual songs none sure. of this exists um dj spin who sheila knows quite well she works with him she worked with him on that song right on on yes. on, on a number of songs yes, right yes absolutely well, um, yeah Yes. Right. And so DJ Spin is just one of those guys. He's always bringing those elements, those extra elements that make you know that it's it's more than just a drum machine mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and someone hitting a, a MIDI <laughs> button mm -hmm. like you, you feel the jazz element. You feel the horns that 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 are in, in his um, tracks. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. There's there's a lot of young people. Doug Gomez. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gomez is oh for as far as like Latin jazz goes, mm -hmm. his tracks are phenomenal. They they always move move the move the dancers. Mm. Um, Josh yeah. Milan. Josh Milan. Oh yes. my God. Josh Milan. See, thank you, Sheila. It's, it's you're welcome. <laughs> I can think of, you know, like it's 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 a lot. Like that's why Sheila was saying when she was saying that if you're open, you will find it. Because, That's true. Because it's there. Like they have, I mean, Chicago, all over this country, there are people making very beautiful music. And if you open your brain, your mind to it, and your heart to it, you'll you'll definitely sure find That's it. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I just want to point something out. I keep sure. seeing in the background, Sheila. I think we have the same controller. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we do. You got the 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 SB. SB three, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I'm looking at like, hey, we got the same only, controller. Only you would spot that. <laughs> yeah, I see it. I'm like, is that that my controller? That's it. That's uh, a little baby. <laughs> so that brings up another another question. You know, I'm just curious. A lot of times about process and being a musician, like 
I, I've been in hundreds of, of rehearsals and things like, you know, I know how we, we assemble things in, in jazz, but Sheila, given your background, not only as a vocalist, but you have all this musical training and understanding of instruments, mm -hmm. when you go to put together a track or when you go to work with a, a DJ, how, like, what is that? I mean, I know it's probably different with everybody, but what is that process like? Like, how do you come up with a, a song? It's not, you know, in jazz, we write the melody in the chords and we yeah. pass it out to the band and yep. we rehearse it and we record it. So, but how does that, how do you, how do you see it? How does it come together when you're, you're doing house music? Well, um, it varies. Um, I may have an idea in mind. I'll give an example. Um, there's a producer by the name of Michele Chiaverini, and yes. he's Italian. Yes, yes. And when we, both of us have very strong jazz backgrounds. Okay. And so, I mean, I know that might be a little off, you know, the question, but all I said to him, I had something in mind for a song that was reminiscent of Duke Ellington. Okay. And I, I told him what I what I had in mind. I wanted it kind of similar to the do wash up to got a hold on me, the song you heard before, the scat song. Mm -hmm. But I just said, just think Duke Ellington. And it's about it. And he came up with this track. And it seemed like he was in my head. <laughs> I mean, he laid it out exactly the way that I had in mind without me having to give him every, you know, each and every um, instruction or whatever. Sure. It, it, it just came together like magic. Yeah. And so situations like that are the easiest for sure. me to, you know, to come up with it. Yeah. Now I've, I've worked with some producers who may not be into jazz like that so it can be it may be a little harder mm -hmm. to develop not impossible but just it takes a takes a little sure. more different process um, but the thing is what helps a lot i know a lot of the the music you know you hear electronic instruments but for me i like to bring that live element in too mm -hmm. so that helps a lot and then the musicians that I typically work with on the house music uh, songs are jazz musicians, okay. you know, who may play other genres as well, but sure. they have strong jazz backgrounds. So it comes together that way too. Mm. Um, and then horn players try to bring in live, live horn players sure. who are also jazz musicians, right. like the horns on got a hold on me. Those are, jazz musicians you mm -hmm. know a couple of jazz musicians in baltimore um see tom williams and ron pender very okay. strong in jazz sure. but ron pender yes yes you know pender, ron street. pender street yeah the uh, pender street steppers mm -mm. no no mm -hmm. i don't think so part of that? <laughs> well, i know the pender street um steppers mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. part of that. yeah so as much as possible i try to bring in those elements sure to you know, so it can have that jazz flavor sure. on it because yeah. some instruments don't just don't work electronically. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, especially, oh my goodness, it took a long time for that saxophone sample to get <laughs> yeah. better, but yeah. still, I, I, that I'm, it's never been one of my favorites. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you but, talking about this song?
Uh, you got some scatting coming up in this oh, one yes. too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Can we just listen for a couple of seconds? Sure. Right? Okay. You have to say do I sometimes. Like, you go out to a party and somebody has on the same dress. That's DJ Spin on that bum, bum, bum. Oh, that's, that's Spin? Oh, yeah. love it. Love it. What the do I? What the do I? Hit him with the do I. <laughs> oh, look at that. Don't Perfect. Hit him with the Perfect. Just hit him with the do I. The, the scab part comes after that. Uh, it gets more serious. Oh, you wanna, yeah. You want to just. Yeah, it, I mean, this record, I mean, well, that's that's something with your music too. It like keeps progressively getting better. Mm. It's like, as soon as you think it's done, it's not done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because cause it seems like it's getting to, you know, it's, it's about to go out and fade out. But no. Here it is. It gets Here it more is. deeper, yes. Now this is how I do. Ooh. Oh my God! Jazz hands, <laughs> get the jazz hands going. <laughs> so what I'm, what we yeah. going to do, we're going to let some of them jazz, those jazz enthusiasts look this up and explore sure. it. Yes. Yeah. And also that that song was kind of a tribute to Duke Ellington. Yeah. He's another he was another one yeah, of my favorites. Got, you yeah. know, uh Maybe when I do my jazz. jazz sets, I almost a hundred percent of the time have to do some Duke Ellington music. Sure. You know. So that that's what I was saying before, back to McKelly. He's the one that um uh did that did that um track and I told him, I said, think don't mean a swing. It don't mean a thing mm. if it ain't got that swing. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes, yes. Do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, you know? Yeah. So that's that was the inspiration for that song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you certainly captured that for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Um, so we're going to have to wrap up, but I want to make sure we have a chance um, to share a little bit. What kind of projects do you guys have coming up? I know, obviously, with COVID, everything is up in the air, but um, what are you guys up to currently? Ali, what do you have coming up? Are you, are you starting to get back out on the scene? What is your, what is your, uh, your scene look like now? What is this April of, of 2021? Uh, what does that scene look like? And what do you personally have coming up that people well, might want to tune into? For me, um, being connected to the underground, um, <laughs> I, I, I've been doing things since last July. Roof parties, block parties, playing in front of the Barclays Center and beach parties. And so things are starting to nice. um, open up. i am got a bunch of stuff coming up. I'm doing stuff for, cause I also, I, I do um, family dance parties, as you know, Ryan. So mm -hmm. I got some stuff coming up for some kids. Um, you know, I'm doing a few um, virtual sets coming up. I'm kind of like, moving away from the virtual sets because nobody wants to sit in front of the computer when it's 90 degrees outside. Yeah. Um, 
but I, I have my 17th annual cherry blossom party that's coming up. It's usually the, the, uh, the unofficial kickoff of the um, New York City outdoor um, dance music. Um, it's like the first one every year in April. So I have that coming up April 24th. Then I have a, another little um, gathering at the beach on April 27th. Um, I'm playing for a couple of private events up in Bear Mountains coming up. Um, a few of the places like nowadays are starting to open up. Some of the clubs, the smaller places are opening. So, yeah, always right. trying to stay busy. Yeah. And we can, and people can find out more about you, um, social media, or what's the best way to track you down? Best way is um, social media, Instagram and Facebook, um, just mm -hmm. DJ Ali Coleman. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. And you can, they can get on my mailing list, and that is def that's the they get the goal when they get on the mailing list. All right, very mm -hmm. cool, very cool. Sheila, <laughs> what do you, what do you, how, how has how has the last year impacted your scene, and and what do you have coming up? Well, I mean, of course, it has impacted it a great deal. The funny thing is, uh, just before COVID, I I had been performing on a cruise ship. Oh, okay. <laughs> doing jazz sure. and some other elements Tina Turner show and all that kind of stuff so that completely shut that down mm -hmm. right so um for the most part been writing I mean it took a minute for me to to get to that point because also during that time my mom passed oh, during God. COVID so that took a lot out of me sure. you know yeah. so I needed a lot of downtime just to you know, get through all the of process, that. Process, yeah. Yeah, to process it. So, um, but, you know, trying to write as much as possible. And I have done some recordings in between. Um, as long as it was safe, I was okay to do it. So mm -hmm. I did do that. And um, I have, I did a remake of Natalie Cole's Mr. Melody. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Let and me, that's. Let me find um, out. That's actually on these DJ's Spins al album. It's on the, the, the new one that just came out? Yes. All so, right. yeah, so there'll be a single of that coming out soon, too. Mm. And then I'm working on a project with um, another producer from Baltimore named Damon Ramsey. Um, and then I have some gigs coming up very soon. I've, I've been a little hesitant to go out, venture out sure, to sure. do gigs because, sure. I mean, it's a little different. I mean, some people are comfortable with it, but, you know, I have to take my mask off and breathe mm -hmm. in, <laughs> with a bunch of people, you know, so it's been a little tricky for me to get sure. through there and be like, oh, we got this gig for you. We got this gig for you. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I have to, <laughs> just give me a little more time to yeah. get completely comfortable with doing it, you know. I mean, it's hard to not do it, but, sure. Sure. you know, I'm just trying to prepare in the background for when I can. I mean, right. I have some things lined up, so, um, yeah, I, I'll be happy to get back back to it. That's sure. for sure. Yeah. Can I add, can I, like, add one thing that, that hasn't been said the entire time? Definitely. That Sheila is also a phenomenal, wonderful DJ. Like, thank you like one of like you can ask like my family i i i listen to my mixes at home but i listen to shilla like oh. i i go to her show on tuesdays and wednesdays oh and, so you know tuesdays and <laughs> i mean for a number of years now yeah like, when you first started doing it right yeah. a couple of years ago oh five uh it's been about five years now. Yeah, since I've had like those when you shows. first was doing it, I had mm -hmm. no idea. I was so happy. I was like, "Wait, she, she's a DJ too." <laughs> and then not only like you know, okay, she's a DJ, but no, you're like a fantastic selector. Thank you. Know? you. And I can see where where your jazz influence, and like we were talking earlier about the improvisations, mm -hmm, I see mm -hmm. that in your mixing skills too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you know? and Thank I, you. And I, I hear that in your mixing skill. You, you, yeah, you, you, we're going to DJ together one day. That would be great. So, so, so the dancers can feel that. Where can we find the, where can we tune in? Where can we, we check everything out? I know yeah. you have a great website. Where we can you. probably find a lot of that stuff, but what, exactly. what, do you, what do we need to know? 
Well, um, I have a show on the Deep Radio Network. It's uh, deep.com, but it's spelled with D3EP.com. Okay. Um, and I do that show every Tuesday at mm -hmm. noon mm -hmm. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so they can check that out. It's a two hour show. Okay. And then on Wednesdays, I do a show on handsonradio.fm. H A N D Z O N okay. <laughs> radio. Um, that one is 9 30 to 11 30 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time every Wednesday. Okay. But like you said, all of that information is on my website, site, which is sheilaford.net. Okay. And then also I'm on all social media so they can find the information there as well. So sure. under Sheila Ford, Instagram, oh. Sheila underscore Ford. But okay. It's Sheila Ford. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Well, I personally, I've learned a lot, you know, and I got a lot of new music to, to check out. I know I know our audience will be really uh, interested in, you know, what you guys have shared with us tonight. So I just want to, on behalf of the, the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, you know, I want to thank you guys for joining us. And, um, you know, when we open back up, which hopefully will be soon, you know, you guys will both have to come back and maybe we'll try to figure out a way to get that, get that band happening for you, Sheila. Oh, so yeah. we can do, Absolutely. we can, we can do, you know, you can do one jazz set and then you can, you can transition to the dance music set and yes. we can get people moving and, and grooving. So, um, yeah, but thank you guys both for, for joining us and, and, uh, you know, I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you Indeed. so much for having us, Ryan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so, you and the, um, the the National Jazz Museum in yes. Harlem for yeah. yes. Yes, thank for you so you. much. Of course, and so everybody out there, you can uh, this video will be archived on our website jmih.org. You can um, track it down and and uh, share it with your friends. If you're not a member of the museum, you can do that also through our website jmih.org, and that gives you special access to to certain private shows and different things that we. We present, uh, if you like what you heard today, uh, you can support the National Jazz Museum in Harlem by going to our website and click that donate button. Uh, every little bit helps. And, uh, you know, most of this, this, the money that we raise goes directly back out to producing more events and getting more artists involved and, and getting more, um, more artists paid for, for what they do. So we really appreciate your support. Uh, everybody take care, have a great night, be safe. Uh, go check out some new music and, and, and move your body while you're at it. <laughs> Indeed. Absolutely. Indeed.